These FrameForge video tutorials take you step-by-step -step through the basic functions and the special features of FrameForge Previs Studio, the groundbreaking pre-visualization and storyboarding software. With FrameForge Previs, you can easily build your sets. Real-time lighting with multiple light sources that combine in color and intensity and throw multiple shadows are at your fingertips. You can block your shot, set your camera, set your lens, you can even edit your sequence. You can bring in your actors and customize them to the vision that you have in mind. FrameForge is the most efficient and affordable way to communicate your vision from the page to the screen. Hi, my name is Chris, and I'll be taking you through a tour of FrameForge's control room, where you'll be doing most of your pre-visualizing work. After you've gotten through registration and the initial setup prompts, you'll find yourself facing a dialog that looks like this. For the moment, simply click No Help, I want to build it manually because it's important that you understand the main control room in which you'll be spending most of your time in FrameForge Previs Studio, and that you set up your camera's aspect ratio and medium, 35 millimeter, HD, pro video, whatever, before you get too far in. But our main focus today is the software's main interface below, the control room. We call this a control room because it's laid out very much like a real multi-camera TV control room. In brief, at the top is a row of monitors showing the views through all the various cameras on the set, including a top-down blueprint view. In the middle is the live view where you'll do all of your work. To the right is the object library from which you'll get your actors and objects to manipulate your sets. And left and bottom of the live view are controls to manipulate objects and cameras respectively. These monitors along the top show the overhead blueprint view of your set on the far left, and next to them are the monitors showing the views through each of the cameras on set. If there are more cameras than monitors, you can simply scroll through them using the small circular buttons found on either side. As I said before, below is your active or live view screen, which shows you what you're currently looking at as you're pre-visualizing your shots. The live view lets you add, move, and manipulate actors and objects on the set. The live view can be switched at any time with any one of your other cameras. It's currently showing the blueprint view. Since we haven't built a set yet, it's showing the default set, which is a grassy field and a blue sky, and a red camera icon down here. Each camera placed on the set is automatically assigned a unique color. The red camera on set is associated with the red camera monitor, indicated by the red outline in the camera icon. Click the red camera's monitor and its view becomes active. Let's switch it back to the blueprint view now. Double click the blueprint view up top left, and the blueprint view returns to the live view screen. The blueprint view is valuable to quickly see where everything is positioned on the set, including your cameras. You'll notice a lighter triangle on the blueprint view. This is the camera's field of view, or the area on the set that is captured by the camera. Over here on the right is your object library. An object is defined as anything, including actors, which can be added to the set. The FrameForge library has thousands of objects, including furniture, hand props, vehicles, prop buildings, trees, almost everything. To move any object onto the set, just choose the object, then click and drag it over, releasing it where you want to position it on the set. For now, we want to position our actor in front of the red camera, so select a man, click and drag him over, releasing him within the red camera's field of view. You'll notice that your actor has appeared in the blueprint view. We're looking down on top of him. And he's also appeared up here in the red camera's monitor because we've placed him within the camera's field of view. This camera associates with the first monitor above, but you can also change your live view to one of your other cameras. Just like we did before, double click the red monitor and it becomes the live view. Double click the blueprint view here and it'll be brought back into the live view. These other monitors are not in service because additional cameras have not been activated on the set yet. While in the blueprint view, you can quickly activate a new camera by double-clicking a blank area on the set where you want the camera to be placed. A new camera icon will appear with a corresponding monitor assigned to it. The camera will also be automatically pointed towards the object that was selected when you place the camera. If no object was selected, the camera will point north or towards the back of the set. The controls below the live view screen are your camera controls. They will only be active when you have selected a camera when you are in the blueprint view or if you've activated the camera view. These multi-throttle controls set the camera's position, orientation, and height each according to their label 
while the controls on the left do the same thing for selected objects. The list of categories and icons to the upper right of the control room make up your object library. This is the source from which you drag all actors and objects onto the set. You can add objects and actors in both blueprint and camera views, though it's often easier to do it in blueprint view because you can see more clearly where the actor or object will be added. The object library is also directly next to lighting and depth of field controls, which are not available in the core edition of Frameforge Previs, but which we will touch on later. The last section of the control room that I'd like to point out is the shot preview area, which shows you your previously taken shot, as well as linking to the storyboard shot manager of this shot manager. Well, while the shot preview area shows the shots immediately next to the shot you're about to store, that will only take you so far. If you want to view, edit, rearrange shots, or add motion arrows, framing boxes, or even text labels to them, then you need the advanced functions of the shot manager. The shot manager dialog is a very powerful feature of Frameforge Previs whose full functionality is more powerful and flexible than we have time to go over right now. For details, take a look at the full program manual. Okay, that was probably a lot to cover in such a short time, so take some of your own time to experiment and look around. Feel free to watch the video again if needed, and as always, consult the user guide or full program manual as needed. You can also visit our online community forums. If you have a particular question, run a search first, but if you don't find the answers you need, make a post. Lastly, if you find yourself in a rut and cannot find the answers that you need either online or in the manual, contact us directly. Just go to the support page of our website for details on that, and good luck.